Let's say you got a milk jug. And it's got a cap on it. And the top of that cap is 27 centimeters off the ground. Okay, now I'm going to show this from the top now. So you've got the top of the milk carton viewed from above. Now let's say you rotate this one time, like you're twisting it off, right? You're twisting this off. You rotate it one time, and that makes the cap move up a little bit, because that's what caps do. So let's say it makes the cap move up to here, and that now is 28 centimeters, okay? Now let's say you turn it again, so that's two turns, and the cap rises up a little bit more. Now it's at 29. Okay, one more time. Another turn of that cap, and the cap rises up again to 30. If x is equal to the number of turns, an f of x is equal to the height of the top of the cap. Let's say you've got a walkway and you want to line it with bricks. So you lay a brick down and each brick is six inches long, six inches. So one brick, six inches long. You lay another brick, now it's 12 inches long total. You lay another brick, it's three bricks, and now we've got 18 inches. You lay another brick, and that now is 24 inches. If x is equal to the number of bricks, and f of x is equal to the total length, here we've got a mechanical pencil. One click on the eraser top makes the lead stick out one millimeter. A second click makes the lead stick out two millimeters. A third click makes the lead stick out three millimeters. A fourth click, four millimeters. X is the number of clicks, and F of X is the length of the lead. All right, let's say you've got a rope, and that rope starts off at 42 inches long. Now you're going to take that, and you're going to tie a knot in it, okay? So because of that knot, it gets a little shorter. In fact, it gets one inch shorter. So now it's 41 inches. Now you put another knot in it. So it's shorter now even. In fact, it's now 40 inches. If x equals the number of knots, and f of x equals the length of the string. This is a stapler, and here's how a stapler works. These are all the staples lined up inside the stapler. When you press down, one of the staples staples into the paper. This spring here pushes then all of the staples forward one staple. So in this picture, this spring section starts out as 17 
in this picture, it starts out. In this picture, the spring section starts out as 57 millimeters. Each staple is one millimeter. So after one stapling, this actually changes to 58 millimeters because one staple gets removed and this pushes forward one millimeter. So that's after one staple. After another staple, that's two, this moves to 59 millimeters. And after a third staple, this moves to 60 millimeters. If X is the number of staples, and F of X is the length of the spring section. We've got a fisherman who's got a fish on the line. The fish is currently 60 inches below the water line. In other words, at a depth of negative 60 inches. To bring that fish up, he needs to turn this reel. If you turn the reel one time, the fish moves up to 59, negative 59 inches. Turning it again, the fish moves up to negative 58 inches. Turning it a third time, the fish moves up again to negative 57 inches. If x is the number of turns of the fishing reel, then f of x is the depth of the fish. Okay, in this situation, we've got a bucket hanging from an elastic rubber bandy type of thing, okay? And when the bucket has three golf balls in it, we've got a length of the elastic at 37 millimeters. If we add a, another golf ball, like four golf balls, that elastic moves to 38 millimeters because of the extra weight. If we add another golf ball, now there's five golf balls, we've got uh, 39 millimeters. And if we go all the way up to six golf balls, that elastic string goes to 40 millimeters. So if X is the number of golf balls, and F of X is the length of the elastic. Let's say we got a piece of paper laying flat. And that piece of paper is 0 0.5 millimeters thick, very thin. Now we're going to take that piece of paper, we're going to fold it in half right here. So we're going to take it and fold it. So what that's going to do is it's going to add a second layer. So now this piece here is twice as thick. Now this is one millimeter thick. So one fold, uh, now it's one millimeter. Zero folds was this. Now we're going to take that and fold it again right here. So now we're going to fold it like this. And so now what we get is these four layers. So now that four layers, after two folds, we have something that is two millimeters thick. Now we're going to do the same thing. Fold it again. Now we'll have eight layers. And after three folds, now we've got something that's four millimeters thick. And so on. If X is the number of folds, and F of X is the thickness of the paper. So there's this silly contest where people try to push a car and see how far they can push it before they run out of energy. When there are four people pushing the car, they run out of energy after one mile. If five people try to push the car, they can make it to two miles. If six people push the car, they can make it to three miles. 
and if seven people push, they can make it to four miles. X is the number of people, and F of X is the distance they can push that car before they run out of energy. Here we've got a boat dipping under the water. Most of a boat is under the water. Okay. We've got people sitting in the boat. Okay. This is sea level, and the bottom of this boat right now with three people in it is at a negative 36 inches. 36 inches below the water. If we add another person, the boat dips down even further and sinks down to negative 37 inches. Adding another person, the boat dips down even further to negative 38 inches. One more person. Now there's one, two, three, four, five, six people. The boat dips down to negative 39 inches. I think I added an extra line. Oh well. If x is the number of people, and f of x is the depth of the boat. 